Okay. I think we can start. Yeah. I don't know who just joined, but okay. So we're now live. Yay! We're live! That's so exciting. Oh wow, this is scary. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Media master Marlo, doing work. Welcome to the third round table called Your Experience in Your Filipino Org. So we're just gonna go through introductions, your name, school, year, and affiliated organization. Mm -hmm. So hi everyone. I'm Sammy Dan. I'm the Mafia president this year. I go to Marquette University, and I'm a senior. And I am part of the Nihon Student Organization and Math Board. Mm -hmm. What order are you in this engine? I was going to say, who's, who's going next? <laughs> yeah, wait, last Sammy, time we did, we did like a popcorn. We did like a popcorn okay, last popcorn. time. Oh, yeah, we popcorn. All right. Hey, guys. My name is Marlo. I go to Purdue. I'm studying computer science. And it is my last year, so I'm a senior. Um, was there anything else, Sammy? I forgot. Um, um is that it? Yeah. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, I'm also the vice president internal for PFA and the Mafia Media Master. Popcorn Paul. Oh. oh, all right. Hi, everyone. Sorry the video is off right now because I'm driving right now. But uh, my name is Paul Song. Uh, I'm a senior right now. I go to Marquette University, so I'm part of Bai Miha. Am I forgetting anything? Sorry, my eyes are focused on That's the road. In popcorn. Oh, okay. Uh, popcorn, Emily. Okay, first of all, Paul, you shouldn't be driving and doing this, but I'm very proud you're here. I had to pick Second. up my sister from piano lesson. I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm Emily. I'm also from Marquette and Bai Nihan. I am the fashion show coordinator there, um, but I'm also your events coordinator for MAFA, and I'm a junior. Um, popcorn to Devi. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Devi. Uh, I go to IUPUI, so that's Indiana University, Purdue University, in Annapolis. We have the longest name. <laughs> um, so that's the Filipino Student Association here. I'm the president, so that's nice, I guess. Um, and is that... Is that it? Do I have something? Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. And then you can pick the next person. Um, so I don't know anyone. Uh, okay. So I'm just going to popcorn to anyone that wants to go. <laughs> Sorry. Cole, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Me? Yeah. All right, I'm just going to go. Hi, everybody. I'm Cole. I'm a senior. Um, I'm the president at uh, of FASO of UW Madison. Nice to meet you guys. I haven't met you yet. All right, popcorn, uh, Maddie. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Maddie Ronquillo. I'm a senior at Loyola University Chicago. Uh, I was a part of COPWA, uh, so we still do things, but you know, as the issue goes. I'm also the co outreach chair on MAFA board. It's very exciting. And I think. The last person who hasn't gone is Nathan. So go ahead, Nathan. Hello, everyone. My name is Nathan Clyde Diaz. I am a fourth year student at the University of Illinois at Chicago. I am affiliated with the uh, FIA, Filipinos in Alliance. I was a board member two years ago as social coordinator, but now I've been embracing uh, my time here as a general body member. So, yeah, very, very happy to be here for my third time. <laughs> Uh, do we have anyone else? Um, there's someone in BSL right now. I don't know if they can hear us. Oh, why does that? Yeah. It's not going to hurt. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess we'll just start. But whoever that is, welcome. Um, but yes, this is the third round table called Your Experience in Your Filipino Organization. So we're just going to give a brief summary of what this roundtable is going to be about, um, what you can expect. So in last night's roundtable, we discussed the Midwest experience as a Filipino and Filipino American slash Asian or Asian American. The intention of this roundtable discussion is to narrow the topic to your experience in your prospective collegiate Filipino or Asian American organization. MAFA is comprised of 27 universities and colleges. Though we go to school in or near the Midwest region, every MAFA member has their individual experience. 
We'll be discussing the cultural, social, and political environment of your specific organization and how that has developed you and your PSA. Topics that we hope to touch upon are celebrated events, diversity, and demographics, and then the structure of your Filipino org. So um, we just want to establish that this is a safe space and just be curious of the other people participating in the discussion. Um, are there any other standards that people want to um, say? All right, so we are just going to start with sharing your experience and comparing that with the different organizations. Uh, so we just want to talk about the first one is dance, so the cultural dances in your org. Anyone can start. All right, okay, so I'm just gonna, oh, oh, you can oh, go ahead. No, definitely, you can go. No, totally go. Totally go. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so at FSA, at IEPY right now, the dance scene is kind of dead. It's kind of a dance desert out here. Um, we do have um, Xiphos. So they're a separate organization, but they're president, like two presidents, and one of the presidents is actually Filipino. So he tries to incorporate um, a couple different, like Tenickling's a big one that they tried to incorporate with their dances. Um, cause it's all about like workshops. That's what they do. Um, so that's all we have right now, but in FSA itself, we don't necessarily do anything <laughs> pertaining to dance. Unfortunately, it's all about like general social or surface cultural events that aren't well, music or dance related. So that's how it is out here. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. Uh, that's really cool. To oh my gosh. Sorry. I'm at home and my dogs are here. <laughs> and I think someone just came home. <laughs> okay, uh, so I come from a very like dance oriented. I have two dogs, uh, so you might hear two barks. I am. I come from a very uh, dance a dance oriented organization. Uh, we're kind of known for having very different types of dance and also like dancing a lot. Uh, I know a lot of people know about Kapo cultural and how. We always do battle, and uh, then we also have uh, modern dancing, which is more like hip hop based and everything like that. And I think it's really the the cool thing about dance is that it's a very easy way. Like, there's not really any experience involved. Like, you don't have to like be super experienced in dance in order to be a part of a dance group. And I think it's really uh, my dad just came home. I think it's really cool to see how. Uh, easy it is to get involved and also it's like a very easy way to meet people and like share a common thing like oh are you going to rehearsal are you going to this that and everything so yeah um i can totally relate to that i think a lot of people in by Nihon student organization. I think Paul and Emily can definitely agree with me on that, that people kind of get involved in our PSA on campus through dance. Hi, Alex. I don't know if you can hear us. Um, but, hi. <laughs> um, but yes, at VSO, a lot of people get involved. Like our first event is like fashion show, which is first semester. and. We only have one cultural dance, so something that's unique about BSO is that we do have a lot of modern uh, parts to our segment. So, like, say we do Magla, and there's always going to be a modern song to it, not necessarily just the uh, cultural music that they usually have. And we always do, like, Snickling. Um, we don't usually do a lot of other Filipino dances other than the ones that people usually know like Nickling, Pink Hill, um, Magla. So I think that's something that BSO is trying to expand on is just the, the diverse dances that the Philippines has. Um, they have so many dances in a lot of different regions and that's something that we're trying to explore and we're in the process of doing.
Yeah. Uh, oh. Uh, I can definitely concur with what Sammy said. Uh, I'm pretty sure last year we took several pieces that we have for our cultural show, which happened second semester. And I think we replaced it with, uh, oh God, what we replaced it with two new ones. And I was actually a little bit sad to see them go. So we're, yeah, as Sammy already said, I'm probably going to repeat what she already said before, but we're very open to new people and very open in terms of experience with, uh, with dancing. Ugh, can't talk right now. Um, and so I feel like we definitely could expand more in terms of the Filipino culture because I know I hear it from like Kiko or like Heather or certain members in our organization that we definitely um, seem to lack a little bit of focus in that area. So yeah, I agree with you, Sammy. I just want to throw that out there. Uh, so we had someone new join us. Alex, do you want to introduce yourself, uh, your name, your year, and your affiliated organization? Hi. Yeah. Sorry, I'm late. Um, I'm from. I'm Alex from Uni University of Wisconsin Milwaukee. I'm part of FSU. I'm the vice president. <sighs> Can you guys hear me? All right. Is it okay? Yes. yes. Well, yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Sorry, uh, I'm late. It's okay. Uh, right now we're talking about. Um, dance and like your experience or, or we're talking about uh your experience in your organization and with the specific topic of dance i don't know if you want to speak to any of that or if anyone else okay. wants to. cole has to leave in a bit so i think he wants to speak before he heads out okay. yes i am sorry about that guys i have to see a theater play and for my theater class oh no worries <laughs> but in terms of dance i guess for mine um I mean, we had our PCN last semester, but I wasn't there for it. Um, so I don't really know much about it. And I know that from my experience in the past, it's, 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 I'm a senior now, in my past three years within FOSO, um, we haven't really done anything related to Dan. Um, so it's kind of a new thing. We're hopefully trying to explore it a little bit. Um, I think next semester for our PCN, but We'll see. It's not. It's not something that's very emphasized a lot within Paso. Um, I feel like it should be because I think it's awesome. But yeah, I would say it's not a really big thing. Thank you, Cole. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Does anyone else want to speak? towards uh, the role of dance in their organizations? I'll, I'll be happy to talk about uh, <laughs> my perspective. Um, so uh, Filipinos in Alliance is, uh, has two dance teams, one for the cultural and one for modern. So mm -hmm. I'll definitely talk about, first I'm gonna talk about culture cause like, I wanna say it's, culture is probably one of the most fun experience regarding like, I guess learning Filipino culture and all that. Um, I want to say I want to say um, our dance team is in regarding our Kofia culture is in good terms because I feel like we do have a good amount of people that do participate in the fall semester, especially like a lot of freshmen. I notice uh, a good amount of freshmen or transfer students will normally take a crack around the fall semester, as like we do have a variety of shows. But we had our PCM this um, last week. Yeah, last week. Wow, last week we had it and to see them like have like three groups to cultural dancing was pretty interesting, especially as a fourth year student to see that happen. Oh, the first time. That's pretty cool. And we also do like other cultural stuff regarding like uh, the UIC cultural showcase, which is like a cultural dance competition within other cultural organizations too. And we also pick up some gigs as well regarding like if any anyone outside is like, oh, we would like to have uh, Filipinos in the Alliance. So, perform at our my wedding or this or that it has happened a couple times even over this summer so that's pretty cool uh definitely the spring semester is definitely the biggest regarding that um uic fia we always host a battle of the bamboo that's where we get a lot of people to participate normally we would want like normally we would have at least 30, 40, 50, 60 people come through to that. So a lot of people definitely come through regarding to that. And like, we also perform in other uh, cultural or other like uh, showcases as well, where 
whenever we get invited. So definitely feel cultural is life, especially for me. I really enjoy being part of it. Definitely just learning different perspectives, different types of dance between just tinnicling and all that. So I like that. But feel modern, I say it's really good. Just the vibe and ambience is there. I can't really ex oh, but, oh yeah, they do perform at World of Dance, so that's cool to have that perspective as well. And other like com small small competitions, well, I can't really get into that. But yeah, it that one is uh, audition based, so it's really cool to see like people from like other dance uh, companies come through. Like we have people that are really experienced coming from like Coda, Peacemakers, Puzzle League, and all that. So it's cool to see different like people like contribute to uh, feel modern. So I want to say that um, the dance teams, both both of them are really good in feel. So I'm very happy to see that in feel. Yeah, I know. I totally, totally relate. Uh, I did, like, it's really cool that you can learn about the Filipino culture just through dance. Like uh, a couple weeks ago, I did a dance for the World Dumpling Fest in Chicago called La Pai Bantigue, which is about seagulls and how they move. <laughs> and there's like a lot of stomping made it their hands like beats like that uh and then like you have a dance that's like very tribal and there's muslim dances where like you have to lean very far back because they're all very royal so i think it's really cool to like see what you like just by doing it yourself like you're telling a story of uh your culture so that's what i've always found interesting about having a dance group I agree with that. Um, I know that already Paul and Sammy mentioned how like BSO dance works. Um, on my personal experience, I think dance was the way that I really got into BSO just because I didn't really do much until second semester. And I remember like I signed up to do battle and then I ended up doing like four dances in our cultural show, which is our PCN. And I know like just through like not knowing how to dance as well. So like people teaching me how to body roll and people trying to correct my back and everything. It was just like, we were struggling together and it was just a great way that I really got to know people when I'm not Filipino. Um, so I think that's what I like about dance the most in these organizations is that really transcends the fact that we are from different cultures and that half the time, I don't think everybody even knows, even if you are Filipino about the Filipino culture. So it like still brings us all to the same starting line. So that's really cool. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think for me, that was the reason why I got involved in BSO, which is kind of goes into our next question. Um, so like, why did you join your Filipino organization at your school? Uh, for me, like the dances was kind of like that gateway drug to get me involved. <laughs> but I guess, um, I guess going further into that question in more detail, like, did you always plan on joining your perspective PSA at your school or was it something that you just heard in the grapevine um yeah share your experience I have um, a funny story about how I joined Kakwa um <laughs> so I would never so I met my roommate on Facebook like six months before we moved in and we were like you know like set we were like okay we like talked every day we we're like okay let's be roommates and then one of the first questions she ever asked me was like, are you going to join Kakwa? And I was like, I don't know what that is. I'll be like, I don't know. Like, I'll see what I get, what I will do when I get there. Um, and she had a lot of friends that went to like, that she went to high school with, or like she knew from before we went to Loyola. And so I was like, man, I got to make friends. Like, I really want to be friends with my roommate and she has all these friends. So I have to be friends with them. So we all went to org fair together. We are, we are all Filipino in some way. And they all like make a beeline to this table that has this gigantic trophy from Battle of the Bamboo and like 50,000 Asian people around it. And I was like very confused. And I signed up for everything, not knowing what like AKB or like AKA ever even stood for. I didn't know what cultural was. I didn't know it involved dancing. I didn't know what modern was. I was like, I just did it and here I am three and a half years later. So I think like, just because like you like don't know what an organization, like really how an organization is structured, the way that people interact with you um, really makes a difference. Uh, so yeah, that's how I joined Kakwa. I don't want to say I was peer pressured because I wasn't, but like, I was like, man, I really got to do this. So I was like pressuring myself to make friends and that's how I did it. So yeah.
Um, okay, I guess I'll go. Um, so for me, um, I didn't really have a lot of Filipinos around me growing up. Um, I'm half Filipino and half Indian, but I was born and raised in the Middle East. And so like coming here, uh, my mentor for like, he's, a, he's an academic mentor of mine. He's actually half Filipino as well. And so he told me about FSA and I was like, oh cool, there are other Filipinos in Indiana? Wow. And so that was like when I first moved here in 2015. And I thought that was, oh. Can you guys hear me? I'm not sure if I'm, whoops. All right, yeah. <laughs> I thought I muted I myself. You. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm lost. But yeah, essentially, like, it was really cool. It was a great experience meeting other half cup of buy-ins like myself um, and meeting other uh, people interested in Filipino culture. Because um, FSA IUPY, um, half of our members aren't even Filipino. They're just people fascinated about the culture. And I think it's so interesting because they're not here just for the food. They're not here just for the chicken adobo. <laughs> they're here to meet other people that, um, come from a different background from them because a lot of our members are either white or black pretty much sometimes like somewhere around there and so it's just it's I don't know people are just really interested in Filipino culture out here because we have about like 45 to 50 members that are like active and I think that's pretty big for um, a cultural org here so but back to the question about why <laughs> FSA um, again I was just to meet other Filipinos and I thought yeah that's it. I'm going to cut myself off. I'm sorry. I'm like rambling. <laughs> sorry. I can always talk it, so I'm going to take it. Mm, okay. So, uh, funny story. Um, actually, uh, prior before FIA, I was actually, I was actually part of my Filipino club at high school. So, like, I was pretty woke regarding like just Filipino culture and stuff and then like I remember I was at my cousin's uh, party and then like um, I was just chilling with my cousins and then like I have some people that that were friends with my cousin that attended UIC and like someone just asked my brother like oh are you involved in UIC man are you a part of FIA man and I was like what what's FIA bro what's FIA and then yeah that's where I heard about it and like I guess like um going in with like uh, knowing what FIA is all about like like my cousin's friends were like yeah man I heard people in FIA are clicky man so I don't know man but like yeah that's how I first encountered FIA or just like hearing the name Filipinos in the lines just through like word of mouth like sh sure maybe I did feel a little bit intimidated at the time like oh they're clicky but at the same time it's like you know what like I like being part of uh Filipino club in my high school so it's like oh why not try try it try it out you know gosh like you don't you won't know how things are until you try it out so that's how I heard about Filipinos in Alliance and definitely I did check out like their um their booth and involvement fair I was telling my Filipino friends that were coming to UIC I was like yeah man we gotta check out Filipinos in Alliance man to see how how this is out how this goes out so definitely that's how, how I encountered the and I guess to answer why is because like I, like I said earlier it was just like my experience being part of Filipino club is something that I want to carry again like in my high school I think we only focus on cultural dancing and I wanted to like see like what what could Fia bring more into my knowledge regarding Filipino culture whether it's dance or like talking about like identity or issue and whatever things they have to offer so that's why I joined uh, Filipinos in Alliance at UIC. Can I, I just say have it's a, oh, so funny? Oh, sorry, ahead, Marla. Um, you're good. I just want uh, to say it's really funny seeing how everyone tells stories. So, okay, go ahead, Marla. Sure. Now, I was going to say I have a funny story about how I joined PFA. Um, I, like, originally wasn't going to go to our call out my freshman year, which is just, like, the first general meeting. But I came for the Chipotle and free bubble tea. Um, <laughs> And it was, I was sort of like intimidated because there are just like a lot of people that I didn't know. But at the end of the meeting, um, the person who's now my Korea, his name is Kendrick. Um, he's not even Filipino, actually he's uh, Chinese and Korean. But he was probably the reason that I got involved with PFA like my entire first semester. We out to the events and all that. 
So that was sort of the reason that I initially joined, um, mainly because of him. But in second semester, when we started practicing for PCN, I think the cultural dances and then meeting people, more people like Kendrick, uh, was really the reason that I stayed in PFA and that I'm still involved. Um, you know, it's my senior year now. So yeah, stayed for, or came for the free Chipotle and bubble tea, stayed for the culture. I think I'll go next in terms of sharing stories. Uh, so originally, I well, I grew up in a lot of well, in a very whitewashed area. There wasn't a lot of ethnicity or diversity where I grew up in. So to me, the Philippines was just Pacific Islanders, just that region. It was really bad. I was very uncultured. But um, looking at Marquette my freshman year and just walking around during uh, organization fest, it's kind of hard not to miss BSO because there's just so many Asians around this one table and they're so loud and they will just go up to you with smiles on their faces and it's like give me a hug I'm like I don't know you but sure okay why not <laughs> so right from the get-go I was very <laughs> I was very overwhelmed I was uh I was very intimidated I'm like dang all these Asians what the hell this I mean like this place must be amazing I don't know this club and I go to the first meeting and Lo and behold, it takes well, whole rooms filled with them. I'm like, wow, ethnicity, diversity, this is amazing. But uh, yeah, I was, I guess fear got the better of me freshman year, and I wasn't really too active in it because I was a little bit too afraid, and I wasn't quite sure if I was ready to really align myself or dedicate myself to BSO, though I didn't really give it the chance, to be fair. So next year, or sophomore year, when that came around, uh, I guess I kind of decided to man up or, I don't know, be a little bit brave and then stick out, maybe help out with the fashion show or actually try and participate actively. And kind of like what you said, Marlo, about certain individuals like your Kuya, for example, um, kind of just like came to you and just really stuck with you and kind of just every now and then would check up on you. Like I had two of those individuals within BSO that were exactly like that to me. They would ask me, it's like, hey, just to give you a heads up, the fashion show sign up or the trials are happening. I think you'd be really good at it. And you have like a lot of fun if you're free or like we're having this hangout, come join us. And like slowly but surely, um, I got to meet more and more people and I fell in love with the organization. Hence why I'm still sticking with them till this day. Um, and I have to say, I'm actually, I slowly learned to, uh, love the Filipino organization or I'm sorry, the Filipino culture, my mistake in terms of the education, maybe certain social justice issues that really got me interested in more in wanting to do actually do something with it. So I'm pretty thankful for it. And that's all I have. Sorry for rambling on. <laughs> Hello. Um, I didn't introduce myself before because I came in the middle, but um, I'm Rafi Terelva. I'm from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Um, I'm the vice president internal here, uh, and I'm also on MAFA board. But yeah, so um, the reason that I joined FASO here is because, um, well, I came from my pl uh, primarily white um, high school, and Madison is extremely primarily white and so I would just like I needed a space where I could be with other Filipino Americans and um, I had a friend who already went here before I started uh, attending school and he was like you should join FASO it's the Filipino American student org and they're kind of small now but that's just because of the small Filipino population um, in Wisconsin so I decided to give him a shot he like my friend brought me to the org fair at on our campus and brought me to their, t like directly straight to their table. He's like, sign up right now, write your email down, write your name and they'll email you and they'll um, like invite you to everything and they'll be so nice. And um, my first encounter with them was just amazing. They were so welcoming. Um, shout out to Cass, who's in Spain right now. Um, but she was just like the first person I met who was extremely nice. Like Paul was saying, she just came up and gave me a hug the first time she met me. Um, uh, and they really want, they, they 
their demeanor really convinced me to like go out and go to their events. So I then went to um, Fossil's really big on potluck, so I went to my first potluck and um, I saw Sam or I saw Cass there again, and then I also met Sam, who was really also one of the big people who um, led me to stay in Faso. Um, she would like text me all the time, "Hey, there's this event that we're hosting. Uh, you should come out." And I just would because she texted me. I was like, "That's really nice of her to just reach out to me personally to say, hey, you should come out to our event." And I think that really speaks to the Filipino um, culture and hospitality. And so. It was mainly those two that really brought me in and convinced me to stay in Faso. And now I'm super involved. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, I'm at my Audings apartment right now. <laughs> um, this is Ellen. Hello. Um, but yeah, Faso has become a really, really huge part of my life. I'm very passionate about it, and it's. I think that's something that's been instilled in me for a while. Like my dad was president of his student org. In at Texas A&M, like his, um, they have Philsa over there, and like, it's something that he passed down to me to want to be like a leader in our community to see our community grow and develop together. So, yeah, that's why I'm in Faso. Thank you, Rafi. Um, we're gonna move on to the next question. Um, Alex, did you want to say something? I think you were the only one that didn't get to. Um, I mean, my situation is kind of different because uh, unlike everyone else, our Filipino org wasn't already made before I went to my school. So my situation is different because me and my friends actually founded our org. Um, I mean, I guess I could talk about why we founded it. It's a really long story, but short story um, is that uh, going off of what Rafi said about our small population of Filipinos, in Wisconsin, um, at my school, it's majority Hmong. So there was like the Asian Student Union and then the Hmong Student Association. And the Filipino culture wasn't really alive at my school. So I guess, long story short, we kind of like made our own Filipino org to gather all the Filipinos at my school like together. Because I knew there was like Filipinos out there. We were just all scattered. Um, so we wanted to definitely like, bring us all together and kind of like make the Filipino culture aware at our school, like alive and bring it up and um, make ourselves known in this population of Hmongs and other Asians. So um, we're still kind of a new org. We just formed like this past semester. So yeah, I guess we wanted to build our own organization of something like something similar. We wanted to bring a piece of MAFA at our own school because we were so inspired by like FACT and MFAS that we wanted to like, you know, bring, have our own organization that does like MOF related stuff and all of our other, other orgs didn't have that. So that's pretty much, yeah. Thank you, Alex. Uh, so we're gonna go on to the next question. Uh, what kind of events does your specific organization hold um, do those reflect your organization's values? Um, I guess specifically, how do you see the Filipino values and traditions in your organization? And that is through like events, workshops, programming, um, social justice, political issue discussion. Very long question, but it is very broad so that everyone can hopefully answer it in their own way. But I know for our Bainee Han student organization, we are like the most diverse diversity group on campus. Like many of your other schools, um, our university, Marquette is predominantly white. And there aren't that many Filipinos at Marquette, but by Nihon kind of like took up that role to be that like, Asian American organization on campus. Like yes, we do Filipino dances, yeah, Filipino food, but in terms of like if we have uh, like workshops or like our cultural retreat, we try to make it open to all, I guess, ethnicities in our organization. So we try to make it that everyone can be involved in the discussion. So yes, by Nihon is, I guess, like we're not all Filipino and that's how like our events are reflected in that. Uh, 
don't know if Emily and Paul want to add on to that. Um, I think something that's really big is like the the theme of hospitality among like the Filipino culture. And I think that's something that BSO does really well just because we hold a number of events that are food events. We try to have game nights. We try to have, we are having our cultural retreat this uh, month. We try to have um, a little bit for everyone. Like even if you don't want to do all the fun stuff, we also have like study groups. We have um, lineages. We have uh parties we have like something for everyone that's just a really awesome way to I guess get yourself involved without always feeling like you have to go to only this like these like dance events like these are the only two we try to have little things um so I think that's something that our org really emphasizes and that's probably the biggest cultural value that is upheld and that I really learned really quickly um in terms of other things I think that we also involve kind of, I don't know how to explain it, like that kind of like hardworking attitude just because I think that BSO does something well in empowering people, at least for me. I know I feel really empowered by BSO and that's a huge reason why I've stayed just because um, we consistently tell people at shows like you don't need experience, like we're all here to learn together. We consistently tell people it's, awesome to like take new chances go to fact we consistently tell people to like try out and intern for our e-board like it's really a, a huge organization that works on empowering while also making you feel welcome so I think that's something I really love and I think that is reflected because of the Filipino culture yeah just the overall niceness and helpfulness that people are willing to just willingly offer their time definitely shows and just like Emily said I feel like just being a part of BSO and the individuals who have I don't know been with the organization for like two years like they really reflect the values of the Philippines I feel a lot of the positivity the helpfulness the kindness I cannot emphasize the kindness enough um, with the groups of people that we had and even if you oh man Ah, I had a train of thought, lost it. But uh, almost every all the events that we do that Emily was saying that we have a little we have a little bit of everything and we try to do a little bit of everything so that way we can reach out to as many people as possible. I feel like that uh, that definitely helped us out a lot because I know there's some individuals uh, who don't like to party as much. So we have a really hard curriculum load that semester. So the study sessions really help them out a lot. Um, and almost everything that we do behind every event, every tradition, uh, fact, the car rides, the shows, all of it is just another way for us to create an opportunity for someone new or old to really just interconnect with uh, the rest of the organization to hopefully find kind of that niche within our organization uh, amongst others, obviously. So it's just a very supportive, yeah, I, I really do feel like the people, the longer you stay with them, like it just has this effect on you where you feel like the org's given so much to you and created so many opportunities for you that it really does bring up that empowering, hardworking value that lies within all of us, I feel, to really give back and to be that person that, you know, personally, texted you and you say hey is everything all right it really yeah it really want it really empowered me to become that person to other individuals that's like i kind of see myself in you right now in the sense that i know it seems a little intimidating and i really want i really think that you could fit in here and really have a presence here so yeah i would totally agree with everything that you guys just said Um, so uh, a couple of years ago during our social justice week, uh, I had the opportunity to host a workshop and it was called Filipino psychology. We touched on like uh, very broadly, but uh, the reason we did it was because one of the core values of Filipino psychology is called Kapwa. And Kapwa is really hard to translate back into English, but it's kind of like focusing on the other person, like focusing on the other person and 
focusing that that person is your equal and not you know there's no hierarchy and i think that's like a common denominator i've seen throughout you know filipino organizations just in general um as well as like the family atmosphere uh with like aka and akb programs and like my family programs like i've been able to like meet so many great people who understand the values and you don't necessarily have to be filipino and like i think uh we've like touched on like we've met people who just who are just so positive and are so like they understand the value of being of of kapwa and they translate it into others and i think with like you like as long as you have that in your members and instill that within your members i think all of your events can stem from that as well so just like a broad macro thought All right, I guess I'll go. So I guess, yeah, I guess if I were to describe Filipinos Alliance, like what kind of like ambiance does Filipinos and Alliance give? give um, if I go into that, uh, like, uh, I believe that I was told, like a couple of my fellow board members told me, or fellow uh, gen members were telling me, hey, you know, FIA is actually one of the biggest organizations at uh, UIC, right? And I'm like, are you kidding? Like, this can't be real but yeah like i guess the fact that we're like a big organization um that we have actually have like a lot of subgroups within FIA. so for example as i said we have fia two dance groups whether it's fia modern if you're a hip-hop dancer you have experience or fia cultural which opens up to anyone that wants to learn about filipino cultural dancing we also have uh we also do um a uh, singing a cappella group called Fia Lee One. So that's one another way that we uh, approach to anyone within Fia that is interested in being part of our a cappella singing group. That's another one. We also do um, intramurals as well. Intramurals is a way that we bring out like people who are interested in sports, whether it's basketball or volleyball. We sign up to play intramurals to play the sport that we love. Another one is, uh, I think this is just new. Uh, we are uh, also opened up to a fia photography. So another way to um, interest within people in fia that are interested in photography and all that. And I think it was cool to see like a good amount of people within fia photography, it's like just taking pictures, videos, and putting putting it into like highlight videos and just sharing and capturing the experience within our PCN last week as well. And obviously, if none of these groups like uh, interest you, we definitely emphasize the um, the AKA program because, like, I think Fia has like five different Fia families, and like, I say, say a lot of them are like good sized, and definitely like um, a sense of family and all that, and just the fact that we're quite versatile. Like, maybe you get paired up with a Korea that has or a day that has similar experiences and all that and not only you get it out there way like i said you're also in the fam so just that family ambiance right there is very important and that's what i like about it just for a big organization like even though we're big we have these family organizations so we have people to get acquainted with a uh, different group of people within fia and hopefully that transitions to other fia members to get to know other members within fia as well and I did hear in the question saying like which events runs like are very important within FIA and I think I definitely emphasized this earlier was uh, Battle of the Bamboo. As y'all can tell like um, every year uh, we get, and I'm, I'm very happy to like see like different um, alpha schools come out whether y'all supporting us, y'all performing. I think it's cool to that especially being at UIC, University of Illinois in Chicago that we have this platform in a diverse uh, city in Chicago to like have that platform to like bring out like all our titas, our titos and all all our family to like check out our cultural dancing and just share that at atmosphere to embrace Filipino cultural dancing and all that. So definitely that's uh, one of the biggest um, stages that uh, FIA has within outside like off, off campus and all that, but like just the ambiance uh, definitely attracts a lot of uh, people to join FIA, whether if you're Filipino or not, we accept anyone with open doors.
So that's why I really love Fear, just like that album, the ambiance and just the love within family. So that's why I love Fear. Oh. Um, what was the question again? Because I don't, I can't see the doc. Um, the question is like, what does your specific PSA, uh, what type of events they put on, and do, 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 uh, programming and stuff? Yes, and like, how do you you see those Filipino values and traditions through those events? Okay. Um. Well, so what FASO does, since we, as I said, we don't really have um. A large community or extremely active community. Um, what we do is mostly spreading our cultural uh, through cult spreading our culture through food, and so that's why we do host potlucks a lot. Um, we try to bring food, different types of food each time um, that is popular in uh, Filipino culture. So I'll like we'll make adobo, spaghetti, sinigang, uh, tocino. Um, and they've become favorites on our campus, actually. And so it's really cool to see when people get excited about, oh, I'm going to, um, Faso's putting on a potluck, um, and there's going to be Tessina there. Or it's like, I can't wait to see, like, what new food is going to bring to the potluck. So that's one way we um, kind of share our culture. We also do lineages, and that really, I think that really expresses the, the like, familial values, like the importance of family in Filipino culture. Um, these families tend to be close-knit, and we actually do become very, like, one of the strengths of Faso is that we, come, we become a very close-knit, family-oriented org. That's what we've become. Um, what else do we do? Um, we also... Um, well, we also try to do um, language. So we introduce people to language, which is something people get excited about, too. Like, um, we have a language table that meets every Friday. So they're actually meeting right now, and I'm not there. Um, but yeah, we try to get people to also get back to their roots and try to learn their language or relearn the language. Um, a lot of our members are actually um, in a Tagalog class. And that's how the org started like 26 years ago. It was. Um, the Tagalog, they offer Tagalog as a language here at uh, UW, so um, that's what started this org in the first place. People who were trying to relearn their language or learn it for the first time, and they wanted to spend time together outside of the class. And so, um, again, that, that value of togetherness and family um, is something that we really strive to um, push uh, for FOSO. Um, yeah, the language table meets every Friday right now. Um, I think that's it. We're trying to get into dance and introduce people to the diverse dances that um, is in, um, encompassed in Filipino culture. But again, small, eh, again, small community. So it's it's a process. It's a work in progress. I would say. Um, anyone else want to add on? Okay. Um, so our last question will be like our closing. Uh, how do you think being still being in a Filipino organization has shaped your college experience? I think for me, definitely by Nihon building on it together to reach a common goal is something that is very close to my heart. I think it's, for me, being in the workforce, working on teams, and not just focusing that I hold very close to my heart because the teamwork makes the dream work. And I think that's something that everyone basically had reiterated is like the family and togetherness aspect of the Filipino culture. and um, just being very open and welcoming to other people and helping others, uh, pushing each other to um, grow. I think that's something why I even joined MAFA. Like BSO has so many different 
ethnicities and perspectives and I definitely wanted to grow into that and go into MAFA and hear those experiences in different perspectives from other schools. So that is something that I feel has shaped me and who I am today. Yeah, I agree. Um, uh, the reason it's sort of like, uh, okay, so I, I relate to Rafi and Paul, like I grew up in a very like whitewashed neighborhood in high school. And like, up until college, I really didn't acknowledge like I knew I was Filipino, but I didn't really acknowledge that. Uh, I only like the, the Filipino side only, only ever came out when I was at Gap family parties and stuff like that. Um, but then like when I joined COPPA, it like really made me like it forced me to like understand those values and like I can honestly say that I'm like happier and then like, I like I know my values more and I'm like so much closer to my parents now which is like great um so yeah like I I know I attribute to like finding my identity and like being happier to uh joining Kapwa and having that experience and as well as like being in MAFA like seeing how widespread those values are and across like several different states and more than 20 different schools, like you're always gonna find someone that like, you know, like just like understands how you feel and like understands the struggles of finding your identity, even if they're not Filipino and like finding the values that you, like picking the values that you believe in as a Filipino American or like as someone who like understands the Filipino culture and like seeing that in other people has definitely like, you know, really Ex really shaped who I like have like chosen the people to uh, I've surrounded myself with and who what I choose like what I want to find in people I want to be friends with and you know just uh, it's just made me like an overall happier person and I'm very I'm so like thankful for all the experiences that uh, both Kappa and Mafa has given has given me. I want to sort of uh, emphasize like what Maddie said about being closer to your parents. I think that's really something that I really resonated with uh, over the past years. Cause like in high school, when I'd get in like fights with my parents, they'd be like, oh, you don't understand. This is how it was in the Philippines, things like that. So having like the cultural lessons that I've gotten through my organization, I'm like not maybe a hundred percent like able to completely see um what they meant but you know just getting some insight on like their side of the situation and i definitely get along with my parents a lot more now because of that um, it's kind of funny for me because um yeah i mean i came in you you i see with with a lot of filipino pride man i really really love filipino pride oh my goodness but then yeah it's kind of funny how you, uh maddie and marlo said like oh yeah it kind of helped me understand my parents a little bit more it's kind of funny because like my parents know i love being filipino but at the time when i was studying pre-nursing and that my parents saw me really involved with fia my mom was like oh anak you have to cut up fia you got to focus on your studies and all that but like for me i was like i just can't i love being filipino so much i i just i'm more into culture than like knowing like medicine and all the science behind like saving people just just pre-nursing stuff so definitely like um to talk about like my experience with fia Definitely the best um, damn thing that I'm sorry. Best thing that um, best decision I ever made was joining FIA. I definitely think um, with UIC being a commuter school, not having like I guess school pride. Um, like definitely FIA has been my gateway like to like to like fun and, and escape from like school and all that. So I'm very happy to see to just be part of it. Um, when people go up to me, I think a lot of people in FIA know me. Um, I think people are like, people have told me like, oh yeah, Nathan, man, he's like the mascot of FIA, man. Like, yeah, he's the guy, man. Like, he's into FIA and all that. So yeah, definitely the best decision of my life. Just very good. Yeah, that's all I got to say is um, no regrets. And yeah, no regrets. Um. 
being part of Fossil and MAFA has really changed my life. Um, like some of you saying, I think it helps me understand my parents more. Um, my parents came to the U.S. at like 20, only a few years older than I am now. And so like to, to understand what they're going through <laughs> at that point in their lives and like wanting to be around other Filipinos. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm like tearing up. But like it helps me understand them so much more, especially as college, <laughs> as college students. Um, yeah, it's like, it's a really big part of my life, and I do attribute it to them. They, like, really instilled the values of, like, being with people, your people. Ah! Okay, I'm going to stop talking. That's it. Um, so, <laughs> uh, g coming from ASU, at my school, coming from ASU into uh, FSU, which is like Asian Student Union to Filipino Student Union, um, I wanted to say that the feeling is definitely different. Um, coming, like, when I first transferred to my school and I joined Asian Student Union, like, it, it's broad and it's welcoming to all Asian ethnicities, but uh, when I really was introduced to MAFA and building this student, this Filipino student org with my friends, um, it the feeling really is different, which is why we wanted to bring aspects from MAFA into our school because uh, we there wasn't really that family feel that the MAFA people bring, like that our Filipino org wants to bring, that the rest of the school had and um just that my filipino org and mafa and everything that was introduced to me from mafa and all the people i met from mafa it just opened up a whole world to me so that's why it's so different and it's something i'm so proud of now and um that's why like the org that me and my friends made now like we definitely want to create some kind of legacy like this we want to make sure we want to build we want to start a family this family at our school then um we definitely want to feel what all these other filipino orgs in the midwest is feeling at our school and that's why i'm here in this mafa chat now so yeah if you couldn't see i was snapping for you Um, I think Paul has to go, if you would like to go. Okay. <laughs> um, but that is our last question. Everyone, very, very heartfelt. And yeah, I definitely agree with everyone that I feel closer to my parents as well. Um, I have two older sisters and we're all a year and a half apart and they're like my best friends and i definitely feel that being they were in their own filipino organization and i feel that i'm closer to them because um, i was able to experience that at marquette as well so i feel that i was able to become closer to my sister as well as my parents i think in general being in college and being in bso and mafa has allowed me to be closer to my family and that is something that I'm very grateful for. But if anyone else wants to say anything before we close this round table, number three of October. Uh, I just have a question. Will you guys be doing more round tables in the future? Because like doing all three of them, I think is like very awesome to like have a platform and just share each other's like perspectives and ideas. So I'm very happy that we're doing this. And I'm just like, you know, if uh, y'all gonna do more in the future. Yes, we're trying to do one every month, once every month. Um, this month was three because of FOM. Maybe you go into Yeah, we are definitely trying to continue. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, cool, cool, cool. I'll be happy to join in the future. So yeah. Yeah, if anyone 
or if you, Nathan, or anyone watching has any specific topics you'd like us to talk about, or if you want to talk about, let us know, because we're always open to all those things. Yeah. Ditto. But that closes our third round table. Thank you all so much for coming. I think it was a huge turnout, and thank you for sharing all of your experiences. Yay! Yay! Happy fun! Right. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody.